Okay, here's update number three. Um, we're in federal court now. Sir, are you legally bond? Yes, I am. It bothers me that we're willing to give people a pass that have maybe six months training. Hi there. Hey. What's this in your back pocket? I just saw you walking it. The navigational aids. What's the problem? You a tyrant? Yeah, I am actually. What's your name and date of birth? When they're poorly trained, when they abuse their power, it is the biggest breach of trust that our society has. Why aren't you using your stick? What I call justice has to do with people answering for their misdeeds. That's the way it was taught to me. You do something wrong, you get a whooping, boy. That's the way it is. The only way to drive away darkness is to turn the lights on. Was that that hard? As for Jamie Goad, uh, the, the deputy under him that he vouched for on the arrest report, uh, I don't know what she's doing, but you guys have been real, real mean to her, so... Uh, I would imagine she's uh, looking for less public places to show her face. David Harvey was the chief training officer for Jamie Goad. I had to walk up here in the dark for jury duty, which was canceled. Uh, when social media started bringing this disease we have in our society to the public eye, I started getting exposed to it too, um, and I made up my mind that, well, I've always been the kind of person that don't really take things lying down, but I made up my mind to properly, and it is the law in Florida that you are supposed to resist unlawful orders. So I made up my mind to properly, legally, and as maturely as possible, given the circumstances, to fight back. Yeah, I want your name and your badge number. You know, I'm putting yourself for resistance. My attorney, Mr. John Phillips, asked if I would make a demand for what I'd like to see to resolve the case. And of course, what I'd like to see to resolve the case is criminal charges. Civil rights cases are based upon jurors that are on voter registration rolls. What's this in your back pocket? I just saw you walking it. The navigational aids. What's the problem? You a tyrant? Yeah, I am actually. What's your name and date of birth? I don't have to give that unless. Yes, sir. I was investigating. You have reasonable. Do you want me to put suspicion? you in handcuffs right now? Yes, sir. I do. What is your suspicion? It looks like you're carrying a gun in your back pocket. I'm stopping to make sure you're carrying it properly. You well, don't have, have you to... ensured that it's not a firearm? No, you keep turning so I can't see it. You don't have to be a dick to me. Uh, I don't know what caliber my walking cane is, and I'm not even sure that it qualifies, but so be it. Well, you're being one to me. No, sir. I'm Have doing my job. Day. Am I detained? Yeah, you are. What's your name and date of birth? It does not matter. Yes, sir, it does. Do you have a crime? Would you like me Call to your put supervisor, you in He's please. right here. All right. Don't, you don't. Sir, what's the stop you for? For a walking stick. Okay? So, and it could look like a weapon. She asked you to really? present it, okay? Now she's asking me for to ID. Okay. I don't need the ID unless okay. a reasonable, articulated suspicion and her that I have committed a crime and committing a crime and or her, about to do a crime. Sir, and her suspicion was that you were armed, okay, and she's asking you for your ID. Well, now okay. she has verified that I am not armed, okay. so there is no you problem. you have your ID or not? I do have my ID, okay. but you don't need it. Okay. Okay. You deserve it. 7-7 Whiskey Mike Detained. I don't know where his wallet is. 
Where's your wallet at, sir? I don't have a wallet on me. Okay, where's your ID? Where's your it's ID in my at? pocket. Which pocket? You are not allowed to search me. It's in this pocket. Thank you. I want your names and badge number. I had to walk up here in the dark for jury duty, which was canceled. Why aren't you using your stick? You don't have to use your stick all the time? Not all the time. 26. 3. Alright, Mr. Hodges. Was that that hard? It's gonna be. I want your name and your badge number. You know what? Put him in jail for resisting. Okay. Alright, let's go. I want your name and badge number too, sir. Have a seat. You wanna pick my property up, please? I sure will. After you have a seat. You wanna pull this out of my back pocket? Sure. Here, I'll grab your jacket for you too. Well, you're being one to me. No, sir. I'm Have doing my job. Day. Am I detained? Yeah, you are. What's your name and date of birth? It does not matter. Yes, sir, it does. Do you have a crime? Would you like me Call to your put supervisor, you in here? Please. He's right here. All right. Don't, you know. What's the stop you for? For a walking stick. So, and it could look like a weapon. She asked you to really present it, okay? Now she's asking me for touch. ID. I don't need the ID unless a reasonable, articulated suspicion and her that I have committed a crime and committing a crime and or is about to do a crime. Sir, and her suspicion was that you were armed, okay? And she's asking you for your ID. It bothers me that people are being treated as civilians and not citizens. And whenever one of the people on the other side of the blue line mess up, everybody trips over that low bar. Uh, and backs them up. Well, now she has verified that I am not on site, okay? so there is no you problem. Do you have your ID or not? I do have my ID, but okay. you don't need it, okay? Okay? And uh, this is a civil rights action brought under 42 U.S.C. 
Yes, I am. Okay. I had to walk up here in the dark for jury duty, which was canceled. Why aren't you using your stick? You don't have to use your stick all the time? Well, not all the time. Probably, uh, I need carbonite. 26. Green. 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 All right, Mr. Hodges. Was that that hard? It's going to be. I want your name and your badge number. You know, I'm putting yourself for resistance. And hereby files this complaint against defendant Randall Harrison and Jamie Goad in their individual capacities and for acts that occurred during the course and scope of their employment with Columbia County Sheriff's Office. Okay. All right, let's go. I want your name and badge number two, sir. You want to pick my property up, please? I sure will. After you have a seat. James Hodges against Mark Hunter in his official capacity as Sheriff of Columbia County Sheriff's Office, Randall Harrison and Jamie Goat. And they are the de defendants. You know, hopefully we can uh, live long enough to change the world. <laughs> we investigated that. We filed suit on that case in Jacksonville in federal court, David Harvey was the chief training officer for Jamie Goad. So on October 31st of this year, when Jim was coming from jury duty, jury duty, he was harassed by Jamie Goad and it led to the video you've all seen. We can make it available to you. Uh, and so I've gone from, you know, one case in Clay County to two, to looking at multiple. Even on the way here, somebody sent me an email about wrongdoing um, in the detention center. And, you know, we've seen videos where police officers, sheriff's officers are taking what appears to be a tip or a kickback or a bribe. I've heard countless stories about uh, wrongdoing with the sheriff's office. I've seen it over and over again on camera. And we're going to be asking for the Department of Justice to come in and take a look at the wrongdoing uh, and the lack of discipline at Clay County Sheriff's, uh, sorry, Columbia County Sheriff's Office. Um, and certainly we filed a notice of intent to sue, which is available on the table, uh, to sue Columbia County Sheriff's Office uh, and hold them responsible. If you broadcast it, I think we've redacted his social security number, but please be uh, cautious of his of his birthday and his social security number if you publish anything. It, it, it's, it, look, it, it, police protect us, and we depend on police to do a, a, a hero's job. But when they're poorly trained, when they abuse their power, it is the biggest breach of trust that our society has. And it often, too often, affects the disenfranchised. Uh, the African-American community, in this instance, the blind community. And look, this, sh show them, Jim. This is not a weapon. This is an aid to a man who who's legally blind. And by him merely displaying it and showing, okay, you were wrong, Jamie Goad, you were wrong. This isn't a gun. That should have been the end of the encounter. But instead, what you see is the self-proclaimed time tyrant, uh, you know, then throwing a man in jail uh, over over ego tripping and power abusing. Um, so today with me today, we have 
uh, some residents of, of Columbia County who've experienced, you know, similar issues and who are certainly on the ground dealing with, um, you know, police brutality and police abuse of power. So let me turn it over to, 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 to them. Hi, my name is Derek Sneed. I want to thank Jim for coming out today and expressing what happened with him. And I also just want to say that, you know, with Columbia County Sheriff Mark Hunter, this is just egregious. And even the response that was given to his investigation was just awful. Um, and this is not going to be the end of what you're going to be hearing in the near future. It's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to some of the other items that the Sheriff's Department or Lake City Police Department have done to citizens of this county. Th thank you. Uh, Sylvester Warren III, uh, also known as the activist to some and the agents to others. Um, I just want to say it's very unfortunate what happened to uh, Mr. Hodges as a blind man. I mean, we fight all the time with uh, police issues within our communities being black. And so it is very painful to see that on one hand, how hurt for deals to deal with law enforcement with being black and then now uh, being blind. Um, this is not only the tip of the iceberg, I think this was the straw that broke the camel's back. It is unfortunately that uh, law enforcement in Columbia County and Lake City does not have mandatory uh, psychological background uh, done on these officers, that we don't have citizen review boards, and that we're left to have to call on people like John. Thank God for people like John Phillips and his office that respond and, and help us to fight through these cases. But this shouldn't be happening. Uh, it shouldn't be happening to no race of people or no group of people. Uh, I think that police officers are held to a high standard. They're supposed to protect and serve, not attack. And um, it's just time, not only like John said, to bring the uh, DOJ in to investigate the criminal and the injustice of the uh, Columbia County Sheriff's Department, but other law enforcement agencies such as the Lake City Police Department. Thank you. Jim, do you want to say anything? I might say a word. Um, had a whole bunch of stuff to, in my head that I wanted to talk about. I'm not a great orator, and I got my excuses for that. Um, I appreciate you all coming out. I appreciate you spreading light onto this. The only way to drive away darkness is to turn the lights on. Um, I've been in Columbia County since like 2009. This is not my first time running into the face of injustice, just trying to get along and do my thing. Um, I've had my ADA rights violated and I've learned how to suck it up, Buttercup. Unfortunately, uh, when social media started bringing this disease we have in our society to the public eye, I started getting exposed to it too, um, and I made up my mind that, well, I've always been the kind of person that don't really take things lying down, but I made up my mind to properly, and it is the law in Florida that you are supposed to resist unlawful orders. So I made up my mind to properly, legally, and as maturely as possible, given the circumstances, to fight back with the only tools that I have, that being a severely damaged brain. Trust me, my friends will tell you that. Again, thank you for coming out. I'm sorry that I have to be the one bringing this to your attention again. Hopefully we all can get together and make the changes in our society that keep us a community. Thank you and God bless. So let me be clear, Martinez wanted to be here today and, and couldn't be here, but Martinez Bowman was just going home when Deputy Goad and, and Deputy former Deputy Harvey started a police pursuit he drove at a very slow rate of speed to his home and they screamed at him. He just said, you're not gonna shoot me, are you? Please don't shoot me. And they never answered that command and they put the dog on him. Um, Deputy Goad put her, had her gun on him at the entire time. And they actually charged him with fleeing and eluding a felony 
they made that case go all the way to trial. The chief prosecutor sat right next to me, uh, 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 and and we won. And, and he was held found not guilty. And jurors came up to us afterwards and said, "What was that all about?" And I said, "You tell me. You're, you're, you're in Columbia County. I'm not. You tell me what that's about." And and I thought, okay, now we'll we, we've won the criminal case. We'll file the civil rights suit and we'll move forward. And and you know maybe this was an isolated incident. And then I saw this video. And look. We can we can use the words. Fortunately, Mr. Hodges wasn't shot. Fortunately, Mr. Hodges wasn't physically injured. But you know what? He was the victim of constitutional violations. And whether you're Republican or whether you're Democrat, we're all supposed to believe in the U.S. Constitution and want to see it enforced. And it was not. And if we keep hiring the same officers and don't listen when they commit abuses and don't react and give press statements that say, OK, we're going to you know, we're going to we're going to investigate this. Well, it's time that somebody besides the Columbia County Sheriff's Office investigates Columbia County Sheriff's Office. And we're going to start with a federal judge. Uh, we're going to hope the DOJ comes involved. We're going to we're going to you know, ask our, our our elected officials to step up. But this has to stop. Uh, we appreciate your interest. We appreciate your time. And we're here for any questions you might have. Administrative, with a so, administrative leave? So they, uh, two, um, I'm sorry. So what we know so far, according to uh, Sheriff Mark Hunt and his press release, uh, he came out and said that uh, he suspended uh, Officer Gold for two days, uh, which is unfortunately we, uh, the community, the greater part of the community was expecting a, an immediate termination. And then he came and in that same uh, press conference uh, stated that the sergeant uh, was suspended for seven days, uh, demoted, and for two years he will have no uh, favorable treatment, meaning he won't be able to uh, gain any rank. Uh, we also find that to be uh, very uh, unfortunate and uh, very disrespectful to the uh, whole concept of the badge and the uh, uniform. No, nobody. No, and, and nobody, nobody made the connection. It, it, and it, it was only because I knew Deputy Goad from her testifying in Martinez Bowman's case that I said, that voice is very familiar. Wait, that's the same person that held a gun on Martinez and, and then testified, you can judge questionably a trial and ultimately resulted in a you know in a, in a not guilty but when you have someone saying look at me i i'm causing problems with the community and a sheriff says what what you didn't have any ill intent right uh then you know maybe 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 it's the sheriff that has the the actual vision impairment not you know not mr hodges um but you know, we'll leave that for the DOJ to determine. Question? Justice is spelled one way, it's defined many different ways. And I, I asked Mr. Hodges that, you know, early on. And this is, you know, this is the, this is the problem when, when you have, you know, repeated issues and, 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 I'm just learning about them, right? It, you know, it, it's easy for me to get back in my car and go back to Jacksonville. Um, but, you know, we're, we're looking at Bradford Sheriff's Office. We're looking at St. Lucie's Sheriff's Office. We, we've got to we've got to have, you know, standard law enforcement. We've got to have some level of of citizen review or, or, or citizen input. And, you know, change is the, the first definition of justice. Certainly, there are some government agencies and some businesses that only respond to civil judgments. We're gonna go for that too. But, you know, it shouldn't take taxpayer money for tax paid officials to respond. And, you know, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna seek change, we're gonna seek accountability, um, and, you know, use the, the civil justice system as, as much as we can. The criminal justice system has uh, dismiss the charges. Okay, that's that was a start. Thank you, I guess. 
um, but it's you know we're gonna we're gonna use every every tool within our our control to to fix this question Well, I'm feeling blessed. Um, people and enough people care. Um, you ask what people want to see. You know, I, I I have a always stated for many years that it amazes me that an individual has to go to school for a, a length of time. You know, four years, eight years, sometimes twelve years. And then the first thing they do is they go out and get an insurance policy before they put their shingle out. Um, it bothers me that we're willing to give people a pass that have maybe six months training and a nice clean record. I think qualified immunity needs to be re-looked at. And I think the insurance companies are real good at weeding out the bad eggs that cost too much money to keep. So we should let them take over the reins. Um, as far as justice in my own personal case, judging from the response from you people, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get it. Thank you. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, sure. My name is Glenn L. Bowden, uh, past president of the NAACP and a former city councilman. It's a sad day in Lake City when we want to thank God for a blind man being arrested. Just think about that. We're here today, right now, because a blind man was arrested right down the street. And we're praising God. It reminds me of George Floyd. But for George Floyd, a lot of changes never would have taken place in law enforcement throughout this country. So. Uh, injustice anywhere the threat to justice everywhere. Thank you. And that's just how it is. And I'm so grateful to see so many people here. I was born and raised in Lake City, so I know what it's like. I know what it's like driving by black, walking by black, laughing by black, but I never saw a person get arrested for being blind. Just think if I was blind and black, I would have got, got probably got beaten down. The only the only thing that helped Mr. Hodges he happened to be a white man. If it had been Sylvester Warren, he might have been on the ground spread eagle about now. So I'm so happy that John has come over here to, to assist in this. As you well know, most of our progress did not happen just in the streets. It happened in the courthouse. All, most of our progress happened in the courthouse. So I'm looking forward to some victories, looking forward to some uh, uh, some justice for John, but also for John before our entire community. Uh, you know, law enforcement is out of hand in, in, in Lake City. That's why I tell people now that if, you, if you're driving, if you're not in a safe place, don't stop. And I encourage you now to stay off of Baskin Norris at night. Baskin Norris is dark. And if you're driving Baskin Norris at night and the police get out and you stop, then you're on your own. So that's all I got to say. Thank you, uh, Attorney Fields, and thank you for, for stepping up. Any other questions? Right. So there, there, there's a there's a story I told during an oral argument in front of the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals on this federal civil rights case. A bunch of law students came in, and and as a law student, you don't know necessarily what what your job's going to be, what your calling's going to be. And a young man was killed 10 years ago this month named Jordan Davis, and Jordan's parents taught me so much about civil rights and the different treatment between black people and white people. And Lucy is now, Lucy McBath was just reelected to, to US Congress and she's gonna be in Jacksonville to commemorate the death of her son, you know, here in a, a week. And look, federal civil rights work is the hardest work a lawyer can do. I've done it all, um, but it's so meaningful. 
because we've got to have change. And, you know, like the pastor said, it, it, it's, sometimes it's got to happen at the courthouse. And I, I'm not one for, for press conferences. We do them when there's, when there's enough interest. I'm one for fighting in front of judges. And it, watching this video, you know, kind of sitting at home and knowing this officer was trained by an officer who was fired or, or kind of quit when the pressure was on him. And knowing the history and knowing her testimony at trial, it, it is the definition of insanity. It, it, and and then hearing stories from other people that that are sometimes labeled conspiracy theorists because they're telling the stories, right? And, and I need people to speak out. I need people to come forward and say, "Listen, this happened to me. This happened to me." You know what what Mr. Sneed alluded to is going to shock all of you when you he, when you see some of the video that he has and some of the incidents that happened to him. Um, you know, we've passed around one video that I referenced about about what appears to be an officer taking a kickback or a bribe through my office, and every one of us, including my law enforcement expert, are like, "Holy moly! Like, what is going on at Columbia County Sheriff's Office?" And that's what the public needs to ask: What's going on at Columbia County Sheriff's Office? We can hold officers up as heroes while persecuting and prosecuting those who are not. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. I was asked to speak at the NAACP, uh, and I sat right in between Ben Crump and Natalie Jackson. And I think I might have been the only white person in the room <laughs> um, besides the people that I brought. And if you want to talk about intimidated, that was as intimidated as I've ever been, including by my own mom and dad. And I was asked a similar question. And I was like, well, listen, I'm speaking to the choir. At this, you guys have seen it. You guys have done it. I'm new to civil and social justice, right? I, I have to learn vicariously because I carry around white privilege. But this is the quiet. And when you walk into a church, particularly a very good, soulful, God is there church, it's the choir that makes your, the hair stand up on your arms. It's the choir that makes you feel closer to God. And what I said that day is what I'll say today, that choir needs to sing, that choir needs to vote, that choir needs to show up to jury duty because when Mr. Bowman had his trial, there was no brother or sister on that jury. We had six white people acquit him because justice that day was fair. Um, but sometimes it's not. Federal civil rights cases, are based upon jurors that are on voter registration rolls. Well, we all know what happens uh, politically to keep you know, African-American uh, people off of voter rolls and gerrymandering and all of that. And so it, it really is voting, showing up, um, and, and you know, even in a place, I had a juror one time say in federal court, this ain't the place for me. And, and, and I just wanted to scream at her, and that's exactly why it's the place for you. Because it's so important um, not to put your head down and just let it happen, because it is systemic, and the only way to fix it is inch by inch, going to mile by mile and year by year to make it better. John, let me say this. I, no, I, you stay there, John. I just want to say I, I thank God for you making those comments because one of the things that uh, myself, uh, Mr. Bowden, and some other folks have been trying to tell the predominantly black community is to speak up, right, uh, shout out what's going on, and stop being passive and letting these things just get pushed up under the rug and go vote. 
And John spoke about him being in the room with a lot of figures in the NAACP meeting be, being the only white and how he walks around with his white privilege. Well, if we don't do anything about it as black people and, and, and get our pens out, right, and stop having these private conversations and, uh, 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 and group meetings with each other and, and put it in paper and put the writing and the, and the citizen complaints in on the officers, then we're not going to get anywhere. You know, and so until we fight back, and I don't mean physically, until we fight back with our vote, until we fight back with speaking up, using social media and everything that we have in our power to address these uh, egregious injustices, you're not going to get any change. And I'm only one man. John is only one attorney. We only can do so much. And we can't dig around and find all the cases. People got to speak up and stop being scared and uh, really won't change and not say they won't change and demonstrate they won't change. So I just wanted to and, say that. And now. it's not all race. You know, it, it, it predominantly that's what we think about. Right. But, you know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I was filing a lawsuit in Duval County because a, a, a deaf couple couldn't get an interpreter. And now we've got a blind man who is now packed and ready to shoot because he's carrying his cane folded up. And it, you wouldn't believe it if it wasn't true. Uh, and, and, and playing out in front of him. That's why these stories are important. That's why media is excruciatingly important. So, so you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a blue in everybody issue. It, we, we think about, you know, the, the, the George Floyd, we think about, we think about the incidents and, and, and we've got to address that, but it's, it's the disenfranchised and, and ADA violations and, you know, not treating people like people um, equal. This could have been resolved in two minutes. Okay. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Okay. Hey, you know what? Can I give you a ride? Can I give you a ride? Can I, can I help you? You good? Yeah, I'm good. Not, all right, tyrant. I think you should be arrested. What for? Resisting. Resisting arrest. Well, what was the underlying arrest? What did he do wrong? Nothing. So that's why it's dismissed. But in the meantime, guess what? He's been in 26 hours in prison or in jail? Without a cane or my medicine. That's, that's, it's, it's egregious. And we, we you know, we've got we've to gotta have government be accountable to us. All right. Any other questions? Sorry for the long answer. Perhaps I show my 61 years. And military training, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, God bless him because if it's, it's, it's cases that create new laws and new policies, um, you know, even my own father didn't really love lawyers, uh, but he, I think he, you know, I think he'd be proud of the change that, that, that we're making. And it, it's, it's a lot of fights and it's, it's it, uh, at the end of the day, we're storytellers. The story happened to him, but we're storytellers, just like media storytellers. And it's it's an excruciatingly important role to educate people about what's going on, so that they will vote, so that they will be publicly active. All right. Any other questions? Thank you all. Good day. An update on uh, what took place that day. Uh, they arrested me for not giving my ID, even though I didn't commit a crime. And they flipped out over my walking cane, thinking that it was a firearm. Nowadays, you can carry a firearm, but it's got to be concealed. Uh, I don't know what caliber my walking cane is, and I'm not even sure that it qualifies, but so be it. Um... I waited the six months. I told you in the last uh, update that I had to wait six months. And uh, I made some derogatory comments towards uh, certain professions within the, the legal system. And I called them leeches. 
and uh, Ashley Moody you're the top prosecutor in the state you've been contacted uh, the third district state's attorney you've been contacted four times mr. Durrett and you were one of the right-hand mans of uh, the previous uh, district attorney for the third district who you replaced and wasn't he the guy that got caught selling justice and couching them inside uh, sales receipts for bulls so we got a real bad problem here in Columbia County and we treat felony crimes like falsified arrest reports which is a third degree felony we treat those as policy violations and uh, any other set of britches that guy would have been thrown under the jail any other set of britches that girl would have been answering for kidnapping armed robbery did you notice how she threw my ID and my bank cards down to the ground when she went to put me in the car but she held on to them four one dollar bills yeah that's a revenuer for you but anyway I support moral honorable law enforcement and I think they're the only thing standing between us and anarchy and if things continue the way they're going anarchy is going to be what we're left with and I hate to say that uh, I, I might not be the most uh, patriotic individual on, on the face of the earth but uh, I do believe in America and I do believe in the American way so I waited the six months the my attorney mr. John Phillips asked if I would make a demand for what I'd like to see to resolve the case and of course what I'd like to see to resolve the case is criminal charges brought against uh, the two sheriff's deputies uh, interesting to note the former sergeant who got demoted uh, has since retired and he's liquidating all of his assets his son has his deck building business his wife has another one going on this is what I've been told and uh, well he's he's got free and clear doesn't have to worry uh, about any settlements or lawsuits or whatever coming back on him and getting into his pocket maybe his pension but he's got other revenue streams uh, set up in place so he's going to be okay as for Jamie Goad uh, the the deputy under him that he vouched for on the arrest report uh, I don't know what she's doing but you guys have been real real mean to her so uh, I would imagine she's uh, looking for less public places to show her face <laughs> good thing too it's not much of a face to begin with of course neither is this here I mean come on look what you got to look at so I, I made the re, I made the demand uh, all right if if the the most that I can get from the state of Florida is the state caps uh, you put caps on things because your officers messed up and of course it's a violation of the law especially the, the civil rights law um, so we're going to give you some money, but not as much as you think you're going to get. We're only going to give you so much because, by golly, it's getting hard defending all of these officers who are screwing up on body camera. Why don't they learn their lesson? Or at least figure out that they've got a witness right there on their chest. Either way, I said the state caps, which is $200,000. They responded with... We give you $7,500, $7,500, and that sweeps everything under the rug. These deputies don't have to worry about facing the consequences of their actions. And you, my friend, have a nice little chunk of change in your pocket. I'm sorry, that's not what I call justice. What I call justice has to do with people answering for their misdeeds. That's the way it was taught to me. You do something wrong, you get a whooping, boy. That's the way it is justice is fair it's the way it is we got the rules you're supposed to follow the rules harm nobody care for your neighbor okay let's see that in action 
that's my update for you all I'm hopefully gonna get some pictures in here I got I got a picture of me standing next to a sow a 108 pound sow that I uh, hunted out in Stark Florida a place called swine in the pines and uh, I put meat in three different families freezers off of that pig and uh, if you're in the area or you're coming to the area this is a sportsman's paradise down here in Florida as I can well attest to being a member of the North American Association of Blind Sportsmen nabs.org if you want to come down here and get your Osceola turkey uh, do the trifecta uh, finish it off if you want to do some great fishing you want to tag an alligator who knows what you want to do but if you want to do it this is a state to do it in by golly it's not all about the rat down there in the swamp come on down have a good time but beware your rights are at play down here know your rights read your bill of rights before you come to Florida because apparently this is a real bad problem we got God bless you I love you and thank you very much for all that you've done for in my life I cannot express that enough I'll talk to you next time that's the update from the six month wait God bless issues I'm sitting in the middle of Waffle House right now uh, figured it was better scenery at least than what I had back at the house uh, been a little bit late getting this to you but here's update number three um, we're in federal court now the papers have been filed uh, the six month wait has been over and then I had to wait for a copy of the filing to arrive and I think that that was delayed until the three respondents in the case Sheriff Hunter, Jamie Goad, Randall Harrison uh, were confirmed to have been served their papers and here is their papers I'm going to go over it a little bit with you I know you've been very patient and waiting but everything happens slowly uh, for instance and I've also got a bunch of pictures that next week I'll be taken to my digestive health uh, specialist and we'll be discussing how good my hog moths and children look from the inside out I got a handful of pictures that she left me as soon as I got done with the procedure apparently she wants to discuss them today December 7th, Pearl Harbor Day. Uh, bad, bad day in our history. You know, hopefully we can uh, live long enough to change the world. <laughs> anyway, figured I'd share this with you a little bit. Uh, there are, I think, 16 charges, counts, complaints, whatever they're called. Um, and they're very well documented but I figured I would just share the the very first of it with you so that you get a mark of, uh, uh, a hint of what's going on uh, starts out this is James Hodges against Mark Hunter in his official capacity as sheriff of Columbia County Sheriff's Office Randall Harrison and Jamie Goat they are the de defendants or sometimes I call them respondents uh, but anyway uh, comes now plaintiff James Hodges by and through the undersigned attorneys and hereby files this complaint against defendant Randall Harrison and Jamie Goad in their individual capacities and for acts that occurred during the course and scope of their employment with Columbia County Sheriff's Office Mark Hunter is sued in his official and capacity as sheriff of the Columbia County Sheriff's Office and individually in support thereof plaintiff alleges as follows and then we get to the introduction and uh, this is a civil rights action brought under 42 USC 1983 subsection 1983 
that raises supplemental state law claims concerning the actions of defendants, Harrison Goat, on or about October 31, 2022, in unlawfully searching, arresting, and discriminating against the plaintiff. These actions and conduct of the defendants Harrison and Goad are a result of a policy, practice, custom, and deliberate indifference on behalf of defendant Hunter. Uh, Hunter is sued in his official capacity as Sheriff of Columbia County, Florida, and individually. Um, I really like when he said in, uh, in that press conference that there was no ill intent uh, it was every bit ill intent, and it was splayed all over the screen when you watch it. Um, it bothers me that people are being treated as civilians and not citizens. And whenever one of the people on the other side of the blue line mess up, everybody trips over that low bar uh, and backs them up. And, and I think we need to start doing what our Governor DeSantis has called for and that's more accountability uh, and hopefully this is how we get it uh, the jurisdiction in parties the court has jurisdiction over the plaintiff uh, and federal law claims pursuant to 28 USC subsection 1331 1343 uh, paragraph a3 uh, plaintiff State law claims are related to these federal claims and form a part of the same case or controversy. The court accordingly has supplemental jurisdiction over the plaintiff's state law claims pursuant to 28 U.S.C. subsection 1367 and local rule 1.02 B4. Um, then we get into a a bunch of other stuff. Uh, this is all titled under jurisdiction and parties, and it, and it goes to de describe who and where and all that much. Uh, then it gets into the factual allegations, and it, those are quite um, expansive. Um, but, uh, in total, as you go through the entire filing, it's 33 pages long. And old Jim ain't going to sit here and try to read all that for you. And it probably don't have enough battery or data storage space for all of that. But I wanted you to know that things are progressing. Um, things are getting in the way of hunting season and hunting activities. And now that those are almost all over, uh, along comes time to go to court. So... Hopefully by next year, by the new year, uh, these slow moving gears will have gone around enough that uh, we'll be seeing a judge soon. I thank every one of you for your support. I appreciate each and every one of you who have contributed uh, to Mr. Williamson's GoFundMe account um, campaign. Uh, I cannot express enough how that has affected me. Uh, another thing that has affected me is uh, a lot of people are noticing me now and they're coming up and they're telling me similar stories. And I'm thinking, my goodness, uh, we, do need, we do need to make some changes. We do need to enforce our law enforcement to enforce the laws, uh, not just the ones against us, but when they see their fellows screwing up, they need to say something. Uh, see something, say something. Isn't that what they keep telling us? Uh, and here we are with another mass shooting. Getting pretty rough out here, folks. But I appreciate each and every one of you, and I wish you a warm and a happy Merry Christmas. Uh, more later, the slowest things are going, it'll probably be another <laughs> few months, <laughs> but I hope not. I, I hope all, all this gets taken care of as quick as possible, and we can get back to setting out 
feed plots, stuff like that. God bless you. Merry Christmas.